Hi, welcome to How to Prepare. In this video, we're working on an inset condenser tumble dryer. This will be the same as all the hot point and whirlpool manufactured condenser tumble dryers. This is not a vented tumble dryer nor a heat pump tumble dryer. Condenser tumble dryers are very different. Now, the first problem we have here is the drum is not turning. Now, there's one of two faults that can occur. Either you're hearing the motor running, but the drum is not turning, or you may be hearing a humming noise, but the motor is not running. That's in another video, and it's to do with the motor and the capacitor. On this tumble dryer, the drum is not turning, and I can simulate this for you. If we listen to this, you can hear the drum, which should be turning. But when we open the door, you can see the drum is not turning. Now, if I show you this using a simulated pin, which is located on the door, and press the little button in here, I can start the machine with the door open to show you. And as you can see, the drum is not turning. I'm feeling warm air, which you can hear. And if you look on the meter, the machine is drawing 2,700 watts. If I turn it to low heat, it drops down to 1,500 watts. I'm just going to turn this to the cool cycle so the heat actually goes off so I don't want to damage the heater in any way. Now let me explain the two types of faults that can occur with the drum not turning but the motor running. Firstly you have a belt which is fitted to the machine and this will depend on the actual drum size. So you have different sizes of belts and you need to put your full model number into the website to actually ascertain which belt you have on the machine unless you've already stripped down the machine and then you will find numbers written on the belt. And this one is saying 1991 EPH but it's not telling me how many ribs it's got. The ribs are actually the grooves in the belt and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a six groove belt and it's 1991 millimeters long. Now the belt can go for two reasons. One, which is the most common, is people overload the machine. This machine is eight kilo. This means that if you overload the machine, the small pulley wheel on the motor is slipping and unable to turn the drum and eventually it will cut through the belt. The other fault that can occur is age, but the third one, and a very common fault, and this is why we sell these parts in a kit form for you, the pulley wheel actually gets worn, or a chunk of plastic may have broken, or the bearing has worn. This means the pulley wheel will wobble slightly, and this can throw the belt off the actual pulley on the drum and cause it to cut through the belt and snap the belt. So it's well worth looking at this. We're going to replace both components on this tumble dryer. Um, on other makes, you will be able to use the other videos on the YouTube channel uh, to do with vented tumble dryers and heat pump tumble dryers. But one last thing before I start stripping down the machine. It is very important with all tumble dryers to do maintenance occasionally. And I've made an in-depth video on the website for you with regards to the fluff buildup that occurs in these tumble dryers. Not only does it cause a problem with the efficiency of the tumble dryer, it can also lead to fires. And it's very important, once every couple of years, you do maintenance on your tumble dryer. Okay, two screws at the back holding the lid on. Make sure you put all your screws in order so you can assemble the machine correctly using the correct screws. Give the lid a tap backwards. Sometimes these can be quite sticky, as this one is. Lift the lid off. Now, there's two ways of actually replacing the belt. You can either strip the machine down and replace the belt over the front, or you can go through the back. Now, the reason I always go through the back of the machine is because there is a separate little phosphorus bronze bearing, and it's always a very good idea to actually inspect this bearing when stripping the machine down, because it is a very common fault for the bearing to go wrong. Using a screwdriver again, two screws, then the cover will come away. Here is the phosphorus bronze bearing. Before I undo that, I'm going to remove both side panels on the machine. Okay. 
put these screws safely because the one you take out the top is longer. Now this panel comes backwards and lifts away. Now if you look closely at the bottom you can see three location lugs and it slides into these grooves. And as I was saying in this video, you can see the dust build up. This is going to cause problems with the machine long term. And this is what causes the phosphorus bronze bearing to go. Now if we look closely at this machine, you can see this pulley wheel here. And I'll zoom in for you now. Here you can see that the pulley wheel has actually thrown the belt off and this belt is actually in reasonable condition and I will actually reuse this belt rather than replacing it but I'm going to show oh no there's a snag can you see what I mean here the belt has been frayed on the side and this belt has got a limited time span left on its life so what we'll do now is remove the other panel exactly the same procedure four screws And the one at the bottom is slightly longer. This is due to it going into a plastic insert. One screw at the top. Again, this panel comes backwards, over, and comes out. And again, you can see the fluff buildup that's occurring. Now I'm going to take off the two pipes one has got the plastic and this twists in and this one pulls away. I'm going to remove both of these completely just to get them out of the way. Now we've got two screws that hold the water container in location. And I've also got two screws on this side but first I'm going to undo the actual bearing. Okay, to remove the bearing, just hold the pin and straighten it. Now there's two parts to this bearing. There's the outer part, which normally never wears, and the inner part. Once you've got the pin straight, pull it out, and the outer part of the bearing will come off. Now you have a torque screw in the middle. Undo this torque screw and again with your pliers just ease it backwards. This bearing is actually in very good condition. I think it must have been replaced before. Uh, normally when they've worn they've actually start to cut an oval shape in the bearing and when this happens it can cut all the way through the bearing and start cutting into the steel case which will damage the machine. It is possible to replace the bearing but in this case it's not needed as the bearing is good condition. Next we need to remove this wiring to actually, uh, well you don't really need to but I like to get it out of the way. So we're going to remove the brown wire that goes through to the front of the machine and also the blue wire. The brown goes next to the brown and the blue goes next to the blue. Take that out the way and then we have two screws on the side here. Undo these. This will loosen the back panel. Now if the belt had snapped we'd have been able to fit the belt on now over the actual shaft. But because the belt is not snapped I'm just quickly going to remove this. And you need to detach the wiring from this harness. Just carefully move the wires out of the way. Someone has been working on this machine before because the catch which is on this side is broken and the catch on that side is broken but it only needs to push down in place. I'm going to lift this off. This now exposes the actual fan blade which rotates to blow the air through the machine and we need to detach that. There is an inner plate here that slides out and sits in that groove and that comes away. We're now able to put a pair of pin nose pliers or small pliers in to the actual clip which is on the actual fan blade. Just press it down, remove it away. Now sometimes these fan blades can be quite sticky and this one doesn't look too bad. 
but you need to slide it off the actual shaft itself because there's ribs that hold it in place. Sometimes I suggest just using a nice piece of wood and just give it a tap if it is sticky. But we'll put that to one side. Now the belt can come up, hold it tight and slide it through and this belt is ready to come off. And what we'll do now is swap the two belts over. Now if you look closely at what I'm going to do, I'm just putting a little bit of leverage on the panel and I don't know if you can see down there but just levering the panel back actually exposes the shaft which you can see down here but levering the panel back you're going to be able to slide the old belt off be careful of the edges because they are quite sharp and that belt now will go over the shaft and we're able to remove the old belt once you've got the belt off the drum just slide it through. Okay, at this point I'm going to clean up the machine and remove all the fluff. This will take me quite a while as there's quite a lot all over the place. So I'm using a micro bore kit with my normal vacuum cleaner and this allows me to get into the areas. To clean things like the motor and around the bearings, this all adds to the wear of the machine if you leave this dust in place and also to the efficiency. Okay, we've cleaned the machine thoroughly. I've got this condenser still to clean, which I'll show you at the end of the video. And the first thing we need to do is replace this pulley wheel, which is faulty. Just undo the two 8mm bolts on either side. And you can see here that the actual pulley is completely destroyed. The bearing has actually melted the plastic and snapped the plastic. And we've got to fit the new one. Now do note, there's a little hook on the back of the pulley wheel. This slots in to the back of the motor. And make sure that the pulley wheel is sitting flush. Once you've got it in location, just line up the two bolts. and drop it in place. Now it is very important that this plate flits flush with the motor so do make sure the hook goes underneath the actual motor housing. I'm just going to do this up until it's tight. Once it's tight, quarter to half a turn because it's metal. You can go a little bit tighter than normal. And there is the pulley wheel and you can see that it's got no movement whatsoever. Now the next thing we need to do is replace the belt. And to do this, just as I showed you earlier, ease the drum forward slightly Take the belt over the shaft, place it on the drum, I've just got to go around the back of the machine, you can see the existing groove on the drum here and this runs down so just take the belt over make sure it's all lining up correctly and I'll just rotate it round to take any creases off and I'm just going to rest that there because until I do the cabinet up you don't want to put the belt onto the actual motor pulley or the motor shaft so then line up the bearing hole drop that in place and we're now going to be able to reassemble the machine to the point where we put the far panel on and the bearing before dropping this onto the actual motor shaft. Okay. 
and we going are going to reconnect the wiring and as I said the brown goes next to the brown and the blue goes next to the blue and I'm also going to add an additional cable tie because I never like these wires getting close to the drum Next, I'm going to line up the collection tray and put these two screws back in. And that will hold it reasonably in place. And now we can put on the far side panel. Okay, as you can see, it's all clean on this side as well. And I've cleaned the side panels. These pins line up with the plastic lugs then lift the panel up making sure that they slot on once it's there hold the front and slide the panel that direction and then reinsert the screws then the longer screw goes in at the top Okay, now we've got the machine fully assembled apart from this panel. Bring the belt over, slide it over the drum, squeeze it tight and just wiggle it forwards and backwards. And now that will get onto the shaft. Okay, I haven't put the back bearing on the machine in for the simple reason this gives me a couple of millimetre to play with. Now, these belts are stretch belts and as you've most probably seen in most probably other videos, different techniques for putting the belt on. A lot of people stretch the belt and then try to get this over the pulley. It is exceedingly difficult for the layman to actually do this. It's not that easy a job. Hot point and interset engineers normally have a tool which stretches the belt over the pulley wheel. I used to have one, but somewhere along the line, somewhere someone borrowed it and uh, I never got it back. So what I use is a pair of grips and I rest that on the motor like so. But before doing that, I will give the belt a couple of stretches and then I put the screwdriver onto the arm to lever this over, making sure not to damage the pulley wheel. So let me just stretch the belt and make sure it's lined up on the drum correctly. And I'm stretching the belt just to try and give it a couple of extra millimeter. Then quickly putting this in place, putting the screwdriver onto the arm, resting it on the motor, and then I will lift it and it's not that easy resting it on and that levers it over once it's on make sure you keep your finger on the belt sliding it over to make sure the belt sits in the middle of the shaft on the motor and I've just gone one too many then rotate the drum to make sure that this is sitting in the center of the pulley wheel and I need to go one rib over and now that is lining up nicely. It's not an easy job but do take your time as this is one of the most important jobs on the whole machine. Okay with that horrible job done you'll notice that I've cleaned the fan blade up uh, in hot soapy water to get all the gunk off it as best as I can because this is quite an important item for the airflow around the machine. If the airflow is working correctly therefore the clothes will dry at a faster rate. Again little clip just compress it take it over and drop that onto the plastic making sure that this is pushed on all the way and that is all done when we actually took this apart I noticed that this was fitting this way that's incorrect it needs to be fitting this way 
and this is because someone had reassembled the machine incorrectly. Now there is a lip on the one side that goes under this lip on the far side and you need to make sure that that is correct when putting it down because you want as much tight airflow on this as possible. So that is under and then this just clips down. And make sure it goes down all the way because as you notice the front clip was broken and I've got no way really of attaching anything to that. Put the wiring back in and I'm also going to connect the heater up again because I disconnected that when levering the actual uh, belt onto the uh, pulley wheel. Now we can put the bearing on at the back. Okay quickly before putting the bearing on I'm just going to line up the side panel as it's already on this side, get it onto the lugs, take it up slide it forward and then drop the screws in. Remember the one last screw at the top here is slightly longer than the ones at the back. That's all in place, now we'll put the bearing. So I'm just going to do it the way I've normally done it, dropping the back half of the bearing on finding the location hole, dropping the pin, then bending the pin over in the opposite direction to the way it is, and that's done. We can now put the back cover on. I'll give this a hoover in a second because I didn't give it a hoover so far. Now we can put the two pipes on, the white goes into the hole there, comes up and clip it into place and the black one comes from the pump clips into place, thread that over and put them both on the clips. Now I'm going to put the lid on rest it over, drop it down, hold it down on the front, give it a tap forward, then replace the two screws. Now one of the most important things I suggest you do with all condenser dryers, and it is really overlooked, is to actually take off the cover here, because um, that needs a clean, Take out the condenser unit. Now I did see this at the beginning of the video and this one has been pretty badly treated. I can see it's got some bends in it. There are two screws, one on either side. Then this cover should come off. But I just wanted to show you this before I clean it up. How is your tumble dryer ever going to work when it's that blocked? So I'm going to take that outside, give it a good pressure wash. The air flows through this way on the circulation system and then the heat exchange is taken from the air flowing in the other direction. So both of these need to be clear. But as you can see, this is totally blocked and it all needs hoovering out in here. There's crud absolutely everywhere. Okay, I've taken everything out uh, from basically a complete pressure wash. You can see through this now and the idea is the warm moist air goes through this direction and the cold air which is pulled in from the room goes through this direction and because this is aluminium this is where the water condenses to go to the pump unit to be transferred to the top. So we'll just drop all this back together and I've already hoovered all the ducting out and got everything as clean as possible. And there we go, the machine's all back together, it's fully serviced, all the ducting is done, new belt, new pulley wheel, this machine should go on for quite a few years now. But maintenance is half the battle. 
So do remember, always, every couple of years, do a service on your tumble dryer. It will save you a fortune in electricity. And just to show you it all working, and there you go. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. Remember, we have hundreds of tutorials at the website to assist you in all your domestic appliance repairs. Please remember to support the website, and if we really helped you, you can always click on the Bipolar Beer page. Thanks very much indeed for watching.